Welcome to the Hockey Writers Chicks and Sticks, a weekly show hosted by some of our best female hockey writers, bringing you the latest news, rumors, trades, player grades, game results, and much more. From talking hockey with NHL personalities to tackling the latest big issues, our team covers everything hockey and more. So sit back, relax, and enjoy some Chicks and Sticks. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 24 of Chicks and Sticks, brought to you by the Hockey Writers. My name is Melissa Boyd, and I'm once again joined by my partners in crime, Christy Flannery, Hannah Garfield, and Mariah Stark. How are you doing tonight, ladies? We're going. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think I'll ever get used to that last name. (laughs) I can change it back. No, I'm good. (laughs) All right, all right. She needs to um, hear it to get used to it. I, yeah, uh, that's right. So I'll, there, there you go. Um, it'll be your weekly practice. Uh, so if you're enjoying our show, make sure to drop us a like, a follow, or a comment from wherever you're listening. And so this week, in addition to our usual team updates, we've got, uh, we'll be covering a lot of um, topics for you uh, because it's been, once again, another um, very newsy week in the NHL. So we've got lots to cover, so we'll get right to it. Um, we'll start with our team updates. Um, I guess we'll start, actually, we should start with Christy because um, a couple of cool things happened to her this week in New <laughs> Jersey. Um, as you know, Christy is our credentialed New Jersey Devils writer at THW. And actually, um, one of her favorite players returned to New Jersey this week. Uh, Blake Coleman and well lo and behold um, Christie's article about Coleman and his um, impact in New Jersey was featured in the tribute video that was shown (laughs) on the big screen uh, at Prudential Center so very cool. Christie are you um, recovered from that um, surprise? (laughs) I actually had a really bad migraine so I didn't go to the arena for that game so they don't, they didn't show it on TV. So I just went about the game. I was live tweeting, doing my thing. And then I woke up the next day and I went on Instagram and Blake Coleman's wife shared the tribute video. So I'm like watching it. And it was a moment of like, oh my God, that's me. Cause I had no idea it was in there. So it was very, very exciting. Thank God I wasn't in the press box. I probably would have humiliated myself. So <laughs> everything works out for a reason. Cause I definitely would have screamed, oh my God, that's me. And I would have been mortified. So yeah, it was great. It was great that I saw it where and when I did. <laughs> and on the ice, how are the doubles doing these days? I think they've only played two games since our last um, our last uh, episode. So they had an overtime win against Buffalo, and they lost against uh, Calgary on Saturday. I think a thing that's going to be a big focus is their starts haven't been that great. They've been, you know, for Calgary, they let in four goals in the first period. It is not on the goaltender that that happened. It was the rest of the team in front of them. Um, so that I think needs to be addressed. The penalty kill needs to be addressed. Like there's things that need to be fixed. We still have a couple of our key players out. So that's kind of where we're at at the moment. We have to just fix things and try and get better. Fix mode. Yeah. Tweaking. We're tweaking a bunch <laughs> of things. And I know you've been busy but um, how are things going with the Bruins? From what you know. (laughs) The Bruins are injured. That's the story right now. They're hurt. (laughs) They're hurting. Um, I will say, though, I I watched the Pampers game last night, which was a disappointing loss. Um, And, of course, I also I missed the first period, which was the only good period of the game. And so I watched them, and they did not look good in the second and third quarters. But... You know, they're really, they're dealing with some injury woes right now. Uh, Jack Sudnika uh, has been called up and has been playing great. He was probably one of the only bright spots in the game last night. Um, but other than yesterday's loss, you know, since we last talked, they did beat San Jose, who is surprisingly good this year, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> as well as they also beat Buffalo, who is another surprisingly good team at the moment. <laughs> So again, it's still, it's so early. It's hard to really start raising a ton of alarms. Um, You would like to see the Bruins get healthier, but hopefully, you know, they get the injury bug out now. They're making me healthy when it matters down the stretch. They're currently losing right now, Carolina. (laughs) They are. Throw throw that in there for you. Uh, Yeah, I just saw that. I was like, that's Uh, an appointment. (laughs) Well, 
Mar uh, Mariah's Wild uh, are doing well. So you know what? We'll, we'll go to her for some positive updates. <laughs> so the not panicking part yet, I'm getting a little bit nervous because Kaprizov has not scored a goal yet. He has assists, but I should be grateful because we're four, five and one. Well, yep. I can't do math. And I mean, we did lose. They did lose a really disappointing game to Nashville, Christy. Mm -hmm. But then they came back and beat Vancouver with a vengeance. And sorry about that, Matt. But I was pretty happy about it. I mean, they're they're doing well. We'll see how the next few games go because Zuccarello and Pitlick are both in COVID protocols now. So we'll see where that stems from and how that goes. I'm interested to see that. But tonight, the one good thing about it is I get to see Fiala and Kaprizov on the same line. And I really like them working together. So that's a, that, that's a good line. That's, that's a good line. That I'm excited. Like we'll see. Good duo there. And Kaprizov second on the team with points. I mean, he didn't I score know. a goal, but he has five, he has five points. Goals. I know. Um, He's still great. Yeah. It'll, um. Still worth the nine million. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, if um if a simple math, kind of simple math, Garfield said it was worth nine million, then he's worth nine million. <laughs> if if um, Hannah stands behind it, that's all you need. Yeah, that's right. Um, well, the Canadians, um, more more glum <laughs> in uh, Canadians. World one and six. Uh, their lone victory Ooh. came last uh, on Saturday against the Red Wings on a little nice win. Uh, win. They've been blown out three of their seven games, including a uh, five-one loss to Seattle on uh, Tuesday night. Um, so that's not good. Um, they were they looked more like the expansion team than the Kraken did. Um, but I have to say, what an amazing arena! um climate pledge arena is like i know um just i love the layout of the arena and yep it's a great you can see the fan support it's unreal already and all the jerseys in the stands like they're yep. gonna see, hockey's gonna do really well in seattle and uh well tonight they're playing uh the sharks and well they haven't won in san jose since 1999 so before Cole Caulfield was born, before Alexander <laughs> Romanov was born, so let's just say I'm not too optimistic about them. You're not feeling um, good. Uh, you know, getting yeah, getting this back on track. But anyways, so yeah, not not positive in Absland yet. So we'll see if they can turn it around someday. All right. <laughs> <laughs> So we, well, I feel we, like you can't start really panicking until game 15. Yeah, no, but game but, 15, 20, that's when you, but, but you know what it's like in Montreal, they panic after game two. So uh, I was going to say I they panic after like the second period. I, yeah. So as I mentioned last week, you know, uh, the GM had to, uh, you know, put on a impromptu press mm -hmm. conference after four games. So yeah, you can imagine. So the heat is on as, uh, is is getting hotter and hotter so we'll see where this goes so our first topic tonight that we wanted to discuss is well um state of officiating everyone's favorite topic uh be, well we wanted to discuss it because there ha there have been a few changes implemented since the start of the year with regards to how certain plays are called especially cross-checking so they've sort of crack down on the cross-checking um, and among different things. And well, I feel like we've heard less complaining about the officiating, but that might be just yeah. me. I don't know if you girls have heard anything or seen anything that you like or changes that you like or, or things that continue to annoy you <laughs> about <laughs> how games are officiated. Um, Mariah, we'll start with you on this. Well, I'm happy they're getting more I guess aggressive on calling the cross checks because I always would get upset because that's such a dangerous play mm -hmm. depending upon where the players are and everything and I've seen a lot of players get hurt um I mean I've heard a lot of complaints but I mean that could just be Minnesotans too because <laughs> they never seem very kind to the refs anyway <laughs> but 
I I guess the one thing I've noticed when I've been watching is there's a lot of like missed calls and then the retali- retaliatory ones get called, which I mean, mm-hmm. obviously they both should because you shouldn't retaliate either. But that's mm-hmm. something I've noticed the last few games is there, there'd be an obvious hook. The player would get mad, do it back, and they'd be the one getting called. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I guess if that's the only thing happening, that's not the worst thing. But it's still early to see how well the rule changes go. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Hannah, Christy, do you have anything to add? I don't have confidence in the roughing ever <laughs> being as good as it should be or could be. Um, I mean, I, I love that they're calling cross checks more like Mariah was saying. It's dangerous and they should be called more. Um, and I just, I, I still hear it. every night there's some missed call mm-hmm. that leads to a big mm-hmm oftentimes leads to a goal and that is such an unfortunate that that's mm-hmm. such a big narrative like in the hockey communities that it ha- happens so much and I just I don't see that ever changing at the end mm-hmm. of the day so while it's yeah. great that they're calling cross-checking more it's still roughing in the NHL yeah yeah Agreed. I'm just looking for consistency that's like my biggest thing is if you're you if you're going to call something it needs to be consistent that's the Agreed. only thing I can add to the statement. I think Mariah kind of nailed it. So that's my mm-hmm. only two cents about it. Yay, Mariah. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is why I led with you on this topic. I would say too, I think um, they need to define goal or better define what goaltender interference is. Um, because literally like they challenge calls and you're literally looking at the video and you're like, I don't know if this is a goal or not. Like I have yeah. no idea. Um you know, and they like bring up rules that are in the rule book, like, but that never get called normally. So it's, yeah, it's still so weird um, mm-hmm. how they call a goal attender in fear. So it would be nice if there was a bit more clarity for that. Because, yeah. I agree with that. It also feels like um, it depends on which player is doing the interfering. Mm-hmm um which I don't like either so um we'll see but yeah that's my my gripe with officiating these days (laughs) all right so next topic a little bit more positive uh we wanted to shout out the teams that are doing well this year and have impressed uh a lot of surprise teams as Christine mentioned earlier about Buffalo uh there's uh some uh, undefeated teams still Mm -hmm. uh in the NHL um, teams like the Panthers, the St. Louis Blues, um, also the Red Wings are doing really well. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, finally Steve Eiserman's draft picks are coming into the lineup and are making an immediate impact um, and has the Red Wings rolling and has our PSW grind line very excited. <laughs> um, so which team uh, has impressed you the most so far this season? Uh, we'll start with Hannah on this one. Pittsburgh Penguins like I really I feel like this is the year that everybody thought that they were going to you know Mm -hmm. kind of off the ledge and especially started the season with so many of stars absent but they have been plugging right along I mean they're doing great and I think they're they're easily the biggest surprise to me because all these other teams agreed really Pampers, you know, it was just a matter of time. Blues are only two years removed from the Stanley Cup. But Pittsburgh able to play at the level that even there and is really the most remarkable team for me so far this off the season. Good choice. Good choice. It's a great choice. Uh, yeah. Christy, who's been your most impressive? It's really tough because I, I really do agree. Pittsburgh has been a really big surprise. As mm-hmm. far as the undefeated teams go, I'll go a different direction. I'm going to say the Carolina Hurricanes just because after all the people, all the players they lost this off season, I really did kind of count them out a little bit. So for me personally, they're mm-hmm. starting their season five and uh, five and L. Oh. I'll go with Carolina. Yeah, good choice as well. Mariah, what do you think? I go with Buffalo. I did not expect this. And I mean, like we kind of talked about it the other week, but 
I'm just really surprised. I didn't think it would be going this well. Nothing against them at all. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, they've come together and they're putting some wins on the board against some tougher teams too. So I just wasn't expecting that. And good for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with all of you. I'll go a different reason. I, well, this is to suck up to my grind line friends, I guess. But uh, I really like, I'm impressed with the Red Wings because it's their young players that are leading yeah. the way. I mean, I like everyone knew that Lucas Raymond was going to be a great player in this league. And, but to see what he's done and the way he's been scoring with ease so far is really impressive. Like he had a hat trick the other night, more it's a uh, cider as well. He looks, he looks like he's already Detroit's best defenseman. So I think that's why they really impressive to me is just that it's their young players that are, that are leading the way. So mm -hmm. I hope for the Grindland guys that they keep that up. <laughs> so, but on the other end of the spectrum, there's been some teams that have really struggled uh, out of the gate, surprisingly so. Um, so the two Stanley Cup uh, finalists from last season, the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Canadians, as I spoke about, really uh, haven't found their, their uh, third or fourth gear yet. Um, there are teams like, well, Chicago, um, who will get more into uh, depth a little bit later, but the Blackhawks are winless on the season. There was big expectations on them this year. Mm -hmm. The Maple Leafs have struggled as well. It's panic in Toronto as well as Montreal uh, right now. So um, a lot of surprising names at the bottom of the standings right now. Uh, which one is the most surprising to you? Mariah, we'll start. So I would say the Colorado Avalanche, but I'm okay with it because of my <laughs> prediction earlier in the season. That's right. <laughs> so I'm going to leave that one alone. <laughs> and I was going to say the LA Kings, honestly, and mm -hmm. Mount, unfortunately, Montreal. I was expecting yep. a lot more from Montreal, but at the same time, it's really early. They could make a surprise comeback too. We don't know. But yeah, those two have really surprised me. I thought they'd be a lot stronger starting out, but it's early and everyone is surprising <laughs> us at this rate. Um, Christy. I'm going to say, I mean, Montreal is a shock, but again, to be different, I'm going to say I'm not, I wasn't expecting the Blackhawks to start off at the top, but I wasn't expecting them to be winless in five so or in seven. I'm sorry, seven. seven. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go with Chicago. Hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, and it's like, it's not only that they're losing, but it's like how they're losing. It's like, how they're losing. Yeah. So I think that, mm -hmm. yeah, they're losing, but in a surprising manner. Yeah. I'll go with Great. that. Hannah. Uh, the Golden Knights for me. I mean, I think they, a lot of people had them as a favorite mm -hmm. for the Stanley Cup. And again, it's too early to be completely panicking, but yeah. they're just, Alex Pichandro is really, really struggling this season right now. Yeah. And that, he's such a big part of that defense. And without, you know, Mark andre Fleury in net and Robin Leonard's great, but he also, yeah. he still needs the defense in front of him. And the Golden Knights are just, uh, it's, they're, they're very much a disappointment right now. Mm hmm yeah, they were my pick as well. I mean, I know they're they're dealing with uh, big injuries right now to Mark mm -hmm. Stone and Max Pacioretty, um, which is not easy, obviously. But yeah, they've just been kind of <laughs> not not there yet. And yeah, they're really missing Mark Andre Fleury. I agree, and I think uh, for and he's sure he's missing them. I think too. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, definitely. So yeah, I, I think so. I, and I, and I'm, I'm not sure that, you know, they're going to be able to turn this around that easily, you know? Yeah. Tampa is not doing so great. Colorado is not doing so great, but I feel like it's early for them and I think they'll, they'll find their footing, but I'm not sure about Vegas, to be honest with everything that they're yeah. dealing with right now. So Tampa yeah. had a slow start last season and look yeah. where they ended up. Yeah. So I, yeah. Not so worried about them, although they did just lose Kutrop again for eight to ten weeks, I believe. But they're used to that, so <laughs> yeah, the, like, they're used to, like, 
This is yeah. the same story repeating. We're in the same timeline. <laughs> yeah, so exactly, yeah. yeah. And they have more games to work with. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I, I wanted to like follow up, I guess, with that is, do you see any major changes happening with those teams that are struggling that we didn't expect? You could, I'll just, if you can throw, I'll throw it out there as a general question. Do you think there's major changes coming anywhere? <clears throat> Maple Leafs. There is, yeah. there is some, if they don't get this train mm -hmm. Yeah. something is something is going to because so, they are if that's the case though is Mitch Marner going to be the one to go I think that's a hard trade to pull off yeah like during Who this season I think Kyle Dubas goes first yeah I think Kyle Dubas goes first um I know the Maple Leafs uh our Maple Leafs team our Maple Leafs lounge team they predicted a trade but not a major not a trade uh, featuring one of their major four mm -hmm. players, but a significant player like an Alex Kerfoot or one of their defensemen, which I could see realistically, but would that change a whole lot? I'm not sure. But then again, like, I don't know. It's a hard trade to pull off like a Mitch Marner trade mid season. But when you look at the Toronto Maple Leafs, though, like what are they missing? Like what, like if you can name a player that they can insert in that lineup to be like, here's your game changer. Mm -hmm. I can't think of a player who's going to go into that lineup to make a difference where you see some yeah. teams were like, like Vegas, like, Oh, Vegas pulled like a Phil Kessel. Like he'd be a really mm -hmm. good, like, like final piece for that team. Mm -hmm. Who is the final piece for the Toronto Maple Leafs? Yeah, that's, I, I think uh, their issue is that they're poorly constructed to yeah. begin with. And so I think it's not about adding a piece. It's about moving pieces around yeah so that, i agree um which is hard to do which is really hard to do so yeah i, I know it's it's it really is a mystery to me <laughs> and, yeah there it's tough to, it's a tough team to analyze it is yeah because you really like on paper it's like you know the you know thing too like they should be scoring every second power play too why <laughs> you know they should you know with the players they have on the ice like the players yeah. they have on the ice but yeah, it's just, I think it's, yeah, it's a lot of pressure playing in Toronto as well. Um, you know, I think that it explains a lot of, you know, Marner's poor play as well. I think he's, he's really been affected by how he's being treated um, yeah. and that really sucks, but it's a tough market to play in for sure. And yeah, it's, uh, geez, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Toronto's a mystery, um, continues to be. The mystery of the league yeah mm -hmm. for sure okay so well we wanted to end the show um on a difficult topic but uh we felt it was important to at least a, a address it because it is the biggest story in the nhl right now in sports right now um a really important story and also with just the opportunity as well to salute the courage of uh, Kyle Beach, um, who revealed himself as John Doe in the Chicago Blackhawks um, sexual assault, assault investigation. The uh, results of the investigation were also released um, earlier this week, as you all know. I won't get into all the <laughs> details, but um, it's, it's, it's out there. And um, yeah, it, um, I, I, I just, I, I just wanted to mention it just to be able to salute Kyle's courage and just his bravery for what he did. And um, also wanted to give you girls the opportunity to just kind of express how you're, how you felt about how you're feeling about the whole thing and maybe where you think it goes from here. Um, Christy, I guess you can go first if you like. Uh, the only thing that I can really say is that the devils were fined $3 million when it came to Ilya Kovalchuk's contract and the NHL fined the Chicago Blackhawks $2 million for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, there, there's, um, there's a lot <laughs> for sure. To, there's a, uh, it's, it's like a spider web. Like you have, there's, you, we could talk about this probably every episode until the end of 2021. Like there's, there's a lot of different ways that you can approach it. There's a lot of ways to talk about it. There's a lot of mm -hmm. different, like, minor situations within the major situation it, there's just a lot it's a, it's a lot yeah 
agreed. Um, Mariah, how how did you take all of this? <clears throat> Honestly, it was kind of like a gut punch. Like I just can't believe they didn't do the right thing in the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's it's a sim like I don't know how to word it the right way. It's a simple thing of right and wrong, and they did the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And I just can't believe they didn't have, I guess, the compassion for another person and putting themselves like either in his shoes or like Tortorella had said in his interview earlier, what if it was your child? Mm -hmm. How would you feel? And that's just, I mean, I'm glad it's finally out there and they're do. I don't know how to word it. Doing something about it, I guess. There should mm -hmm. be obviously more done. There's nothing you can do to repair what's been done, but hopefully this helps other people and it changes things and hopefully it, I don't know, mm -hmm. things get changed. Yeah, I think, I think things will definitely change. So um, yeah, he, he, uh, he is helping a lot of people right now. So if nothing else, um, we'll be able to take that from this. Um, Hannah, what do you, what are you, what are your thoughts? Um, so I'm going to try to really be, I wrote things down yesterday after uh, watching the interview. Cause I knew that if I didn't, I, I could talk like Christy said, so much to talk about and break down with this situation. Um, but the biggest thing is I've been disappointed. Um, and a lot of what I've been disappointed in, you know, like Mariah, they had a choice of right or wrong. They made the wrong decision. The response by so many people has also been disappointing. Um, uh, Jeremy Colleton had a statement yesterday where he, you know, while he did say the hockey culture needs to change, he also said something along, like along the lines of you need, you got to feel for Sam Bowman. And, you know, mm -hmm. and he, he apologized for that later and Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves. And they've all kind of said these made comments that not necessarily defend Sam Bowman, but are trying to, I don't know what, what the right word is, but they're, they're, they're putting their relationship and saying that, you know, they never had a bad experience. So therefore, you know, we're going to yeah. focus on that. Mm -hmm. And I think that is disappointing, especially when you consider that Bowman, Quenonville, shovel day off everybody who had that meeting in may 2010 to discuss this they all knew what aldridge <laughs> did mm -hmm. they all knew he was dangerous and they let him stay with the team as a stanley cup was more important and yeah. in that time he assaulted an intern and then they let him leave and go work at a high school he assaulted a 16 year old mm -hmm. no not, none of that is you don't feel for Sam Bowman because he he made it possible for that to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Kevin Weeks actually just tweeted now that said that there is a coaching change coming shortly to the Florida Panthers. At least mm -hmm. that's what he's hearing. Oh, uh, okay. And he actually, oh. what he wrote was that John Torrella might be the top candidate mm. to take over. Interesting. So that could be. Interesting. Yeah, I feel like Torts has, Torts has really, um, uh, I would say repaired a bit of his reputation through his TV work. Cause I find he's been really excellent. Um, so I think people see him in a much different light now. So yeah, I think that would be, I actually thought that he would be a good fit in Chicago as well, but I'm not sure after hearing his comments uh, about this situation, I'm not sure he would want to go work there, but um, great if he's getting another chance. Um, and that's a good, uh, great fit for Florida too. So, and I think Zito knows uh, Torrell. Didn't they? Did they work together in Columbus? That's right. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I, I think you all three of you uh, covered it pretty much. But I, you know, I think for me, it's just something that I was, I've been told since I was young because I'm a huge sports fan, and I, you know, I. I look up to a lot of athletes, a lot of, you know, um, celebrities and things like that. And it's just, I think this is just a stark reminder that we don't, even though we see them on TV and we read about them and we, 
see them play? Are we, you know, we don't know people and that we should be careful about placing them on a pedestal, pedestal. Mm -hmm. um, because we don't know who they really are. Um, and I mean that in a, in a, and it can be in a good way and in a negative way. Mm -hmm. um, and it's tough when things like, you know, I, I feel for, you know, kids and teenagers and young adults who have Taves and Kane jerseys and um, who look up to these, like it's, it's tough um, to see that, but, and also, uh, you know, that we, we know this hockey culture uh, needs to change society's culture needs to change uh, we shouldn't pretend that this is just a hockey something that happens in hockey it happens everywhere in every business and in every industry mm -hmm. um, I think Hannah said it before the show you know hockey is just a microcosm of society and we just have to remember that that you know and so when things like that come out yeah it hurts yeah it, it's hard to hear but most first and foremost we have to believe survivors we have to believe this victims of, of these kind of heinous acts. And if they speak up, we have to listen and do something about it. And I hope that this is like yesterday was a groundbreaking day for the NHL, that something like this happened. And I hope that it means that change is coming somewhere down the line. Well said. So, that, that's how we're going to end our show this week. Um, if you, I will say, if you do want to, um, you know, to support our Blackhawks banner um, team who have had a really tough week, obviously, and I know that they will be covering this story um, on the website and on their show next week. So if you want to give them a listen, I know they've already ar articulated so many great things. Um, so if make sure to support them and check out their show. I know I'll, I will be. And uh, on that note, well, we'll see you next week. Thanks as always for tuning in. Um, be sure to follow us uh, on social media to be sure to check out all our work on hockeywriters.com. Um, listen to our show on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform. And again, uh, send in your questions, comments. We like really like to hear from you. And we got a lot of great stuff coming up for you in the coming weeks. Oh, and um, make sure that you're um, signing up for morningskate.io. Sorry, I always have to get that in there for Christy because <laughs> they work really hard on the newsletter. So morningskate, morningskate.io. If you haven't signed up already, please do. And we'll see you next week.